guys, welcome back to another episode of the Bottle Brigade Talk Show. Today we got Nick and also Dr. Mike Isratel, wow. the world famous. Wow. And um, thank you. Because I know you personally, um, and I don't think a lot of people know about this, are you trying to keep this secret about jujitsu or no? Because you don't really post about it very much. Uh, that's true. There's a good, there's a reason, I don't know if it's good, there's a reason I don't post about it. Why? Why? Uh, I tend to see my posting as a tiny combination of my bullshit, uninteresting life. Can I swear on here or not? Yeah, as much as you want. Uh, <laughs> fuck, 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 fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get him uh, up. Get the quota. Like my postings mostly not about my life, which is highly uninteresting. Yeah. Uh, and hobbies, which nobody cares about, I think, or at least I don't. <laughs> and then it's most of my postings about hypertrophy training, in which yeah. I'm like an expert or whatever. Yeah. Uh, I'm a brown belt in jujitsu, but I have a jujitsu coach, Josh Fogel from Sloth Report, and he's a savant. Yeah. And like to, to put this in perspective, I weigh 250 pounds, and I I've beaten a lot of pretty good people. Um, Josh weighs 150, and I've never passed his guard. Wow. What? Yeah, it's nonsense. This is not it make any sense. So, like, I'm actually not an authority in jiu-jitsu, which is why I never post about it, because I treat my page more as an informational page. I don't want people coming to my page for jiu-jitsu insight, because I basically, uh. I don't have any. <laughs> yeah, just, like, get enormous and work on three moves, and then you'll be like me. <laughs> That's insane. Yeah, so when I first found out found that out about you, because you're so into hypertrophy that it also blew my mind that you were a brown belt. And I, and I think when I first met you, you were a purple belt. And it also just still blew my mind that like the amount of time it takes to dedicate, like to get, you know, like to reach where you have at both, it takes a long time. So I know there's a lot of people out there that also want to pursue like two sports at a time. Like how would you approach that? And like if you were, if someone were wanted to accomplish both, like it's, uh, most people, they either do one or the other, but I know a lot of people want to do both. Like, how would you, how would you have people start off doing, doing that? That's a good question. Uh, is the first thing, this is going to be really Can you also say that without flexing? So you just keep flexing every five seconds. I'm not flexing. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> it's just my heartbeat. I, I think you're very attractive and I'm very, oh, man. I'm very I'm nervous. Flattered. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. It's like, it all just starts off with... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Get huge and you can do whatever sports you want, kids. Drink milk and Kinda don't true, do drugs. Though. Do yeah. a lot of drugs if you do. Um, your body has a maximum amount of stress it can take until it breaks. And that stress can be chronically applied. So you might feel okay in one week, but then a few weeks later it's too much stress and it just accumulates and sort of spills over. And um, I think that's a huge concern when you're doing two sports. Because if you just do two sports and do them both at like a regular, imagine being a pro tennis player and basketball player. Your body will fall apart because pro basketball is like at 90% of the level to where if you did more, you would just like your elbows, knees, everything would just, it's too much stress for your body to recover from. And the biggest insight from multi-sport training is to figure out how much total bullshit your body can handle on a regular basis and then reduce that to like 40% for one sport, 40% for the other sport, that adds up to 80, and then it's a conservative, and then try to find the balance within those. Maybe it's a little more, maybe it's a little less. The biggest mistake people make is trying to go full bore on all of them. So I'll, I'll put the example here. If you train with weights like six times a week for two hours hard, and you do jujitsu five times a week, full class every time, you will probably break into multiple pieces. It's just gonna take some time. And when people say, I wanna do two sports, I think some people have in their heads, like, the only thing keeping me from doing two sports is like, fucking mental toughness, bro. Which may be a factor also. <laughs> but your body's made of human things. It's like you're reading my mind right now. Yeah, because you, everything I'm thinking you wanna go super fucking psychotic on all that shit. Yeah. But the body is, the, the flesh is weak. You know, the first time I found that out was, I was trying to, we can make uh, uh, off-color jokes yeah, here. Dude, all yeah, all. dude. I was trying to see like how much can a human being masturbate, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I realized that my body was had physical limits. My actual. What was your, what's your limit? What's your limit? What's your masturbation limit? It's not impressive. What is it? Did you do it a twenty-four hour cycle? All I said, you, 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 all I said was I tried. Okay. <laughs> 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 I think in high school I tried. So the first one is feels really good. Amazing. Second one doesn't feel as good. Still good. The third one, I was like, okay, I could, st I could stop now if I want. Fourth one, you just feel but you have sad. to keep going. Like and then I think, like, I think, I think the fifth one, it was just like water coming out, and I'm like, 
but you, you're just so young that you have to figure these things out. And you also, it's either that or homework. Yes. <laughs> you're not going to do homework. <laughs> well, I was a good student. I did my homework first. And he still did it. And so, so my, my personal <laughs> record is uh, five. Dude, mine too. In one day, five, wow. which is respectable. We're five brothers. That's awesome. Is that really? That's <laughs> no, we, like, we found it first, dude. That's probably like, you know, it's like, that's like a 400 pound squat. It's like what, how, how strong most normal people can get. And then they just don't go beyond. There was a gentleman in my high school who was a good friend of mine. I will leave his name out, but uh, we'll just call him Bob. And my nickname for him was Machine Gun Bob <laughs> because his personal record was 11. Wow. And, and I was just awestruck. Yeah. And awestruck in a good way of like, teach me your secret. Does he have really soft hands? I don't know, bro. I don't. He never taught me the fucking secrets. Genetic. He was like uh, Obi Wan Kenobi. He just put his hood down and just like. Because my hands are my hands are kind of abrasive. I don't even know if I could rub my arm that way. That. Long. Which is like here's the thing. Like if you have soft hands, on the one hand it's good because you have the endurance. But on the other hand, if you're on time number eight, soft hands aren't going to do the fucking trick. Yeah. Your boy needs some friction to feel some shit after yeah. a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Dead so it's like yeah. So if you started with soft hands, but they incrementally got calloused as you went. That would be ideal. Yeah, that's the perfect storm. Yeah. So going back to like, <laughs> <laughs> no, we can't go back. How are we gonna go back? I watched this podcast. I didn't learn anything. <laughs> so you know how like you're saying like you want to take whatever volume you can do in that one sport, bring it down to like forty percent. Yes. When I watch you lift weights, the amount of volume is already insane. Mm. That's your forty percent. Like if you weren't doing jujitsu, it would be even crazier than that. That's my, um, cause I see you like hugging a trash can. Oh yeah. Yeah, throwing up into it. <laughs> That's more of a romantic thing. <laughs> oh, I see. Sometimes the, tra sometimes the trash can looks at you and you're like, are you really looking at me like yeah, that? Like We're in public. <laughs> trash can, get out of here. I have a wife. <laughs> um, so that bodybuilding thing is actually by my 80% and my jujitsu is at 15%. 15? Yeah, oh. because I'm purposefully trying to I'm 38 years old. I figure I have another couple of years in bodybuilding. I'm purposely trying to like do the next couple of shows and really just show something kind of like my best um, and keeping jujitsu intentionally on the back burner. So it's two to four sessions a week and it's like the, I get a total of maybe 30 minutes of rolling each time. I'm not going psychotic. I'm not going full bore. What's the other time? Just like class or like learning? I, do, I haven't done class in a really long time. I have a, a personal coach, Josh Vogel. Oh, so, you, so it's just 30 minutes of rolling, but just really light. Uh, so like up to about 50% intensity for me. Um, and then sometimes I, I uh, oftentimes now I drill with my wife. She's gotten into jiu-jitsu now, so we can get into some good roles. Oh, cool. And I can, cause you know, she's tiny Asian thing and I can take it pretty <laughs> easy. I give my wife gets a hundred percent, man. Yeah, like, so welcome to jiu-jitsu. I threw her into a wall. <laughs> she would just probably come back angrier if anything. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so I really toned down jiu-jitsu and I, I don't like that at all because um, jiu-jitsu is really fun and I can't wait until I'm done with bodybuilding so that I can do, I'm gonna flip the script and I'm gonna do enough hypertrophy work to still be sort of jacked in the upper body and then I'm just gonna go like six days a week into jujitsu and start to develop my game much more. Cause like I'm a sports scientist by education and my coach is a sports scientist by sort of arriving at it just through trial and error. And we both can make such a beautifully integrated program for jujitsu, and I can't wait. Mm -hmm. So this back burner shit's pissing me off, but it's just the reality. I wish I could do both at the same time, but I would like fall into a fucking million pieces. So it also sounds like um, it's cool that you kind of have a plan laid, laid out and you are prioritizing in almost like as one shrinks, the other one grows too. And it's like, and it's very, intentful and it's also like uh, you don't just go ham and then fucking get burnt out. Yeah, it would be fun to do that shit, but they gave me a PhD for the shit, so I can't just be like, can you imagine? I'm like a sports scientist, like, how do you train yourself? Like, fuck it, whatever feels good, bro. Like, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Great. That guy's an idiot. <laughs> yeah. Do Do you want to like start competing in jiu-jitsu as well too? I, I used to compete in jiu-jitsu, uh, even while doing the mostly bodybuilding. You just murder motherfuckers? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, some people know a lot of technique. competing, it's 100%, right? And you get yeah. to apply your physical attributes. Yeah, I've never got 100% in competition because that has a marginal increase of injury risk that I'm not willing to take while bodybuilding. But uh, I've gone pretty hard. Um, I've been fairly successful in competition. Did you ever rip someone's arm off their socket? Just one time. It was <laughs> a misunderstanding. <laughs> it is what it was. Um, but uh, yeah, it's cool. I'm not. I think I'm not that good at jujitsu. Um, I feel like a lot of people who would have my strength and muscularity and have their jujitsu knowledge would be better than me. 
I was, um, I had some really good coaches and they taught me how to use my physicality and build in a way that was like ideal for me or pretty close, like a good personalized game. At the end of the day, that's how everyone's jujitsu should look, but at certain levels of advancement, I just had to get there first because I was already fucking weird looking. So for example, like <laughs> I don't triangle people because only a 10 year old would fit between my legs. <laughs> like, I'm not really planning on competing against 10 year olds anytime soon. That's like looked down upon or whatever. Although some 10 year olds talk that shit, be like, motherfucker, you know yeah, turn 11. You better watch out. Yeah. Yeah. Getting out of adult class, it's on. <laughs> but uh, So I have to do some, I have a, a pretty unique move set. Um, I work a lot out of deep half. Um, and that like, cause you know, I'm like round. And if you're on top of me, you're like, oh shit, I'm not really close to the ground anymore. And there's tons of <laughs> options from there, but I have a very, very specialized game. Um, I'm not overly athletic by average, but um, it helps to be by jujitsu standards, mythically strong, which is sweet. You know, sometimes I'm like, ah, I don't feel like you being here and just throw a person off you. They're like, <laughs> must be nice. <laughs> it's nice. I don't feel like yeah, you're not learning a whole lot. One. <laughs> this one time. Yeah, for sure. That's fucking dope. Well, thank you so much for sharing. Cause I know a lot of people out there have so many goals and most people I know have a passion in at least two sports. So it's cool to hear from someone with so much experience and so much authority on what they should do. Um, if they want to find more content from you, where can they go? Just go to YouTube, um, type in my name, or, or uh, here's a bonus round, type in Renaissance Periodization. How the fuck do you spell that? Oh, JK. Ha ha. There it is. The boy's got the hookup. We're but in any case, Dr. Mike, right? Dr. Mike, anything you do. Google knows where to find me. And then my YouTube has a bunch of stuff about, it's just all like informational shit. Don't watch it, mm, not at work, unless you have headphones. Definitely not around your kids. I'll say unspeakable things every now and again. Uh, Swearing, references to body fluids. All the good stuff. But it's coming from a PhD, so it's okay. And, and from a good place. <laughs> yeah. See you guys next time.